Hey, hey, welcome back to the fourth video of the series. Now, in this video, we will be configuring the clock speed of the STM32 microcontroller. Now, this is uh, the processing speed at which your code will be executing. And this will actually determine how fast and slow uh, your code will be executing. Apart from configuring the main uh, clock speed of your processor, we can also configure the peripheral clock speed or the clock speed which needs to be allocated to all the peripherals of your STM32 microcontroller, which can be basically anything and everything like the, the UART, the CAN bus, the GPIOs, the timers, etc. Okay, so let's get started. So here we are, um, we have the project which we created in the previous video and we have the device configurator tool over here and as we discussed in the previous video all the peripherals are uh, which are already there on your nuclear board are initialized for us like uh, the uart the green led and the blue push button now what i want you guys to do is to go into the clock configuration tab and then here we have the clock configurator window. Now, if your uh, display size uh, or the resolution is small on your laptop or your uh, monitor, then what you can do is you can double click on this tab and then the whole thing expands to a full screen view. Now, if you are doing this for the first time, then this might be quite um, overwhelming. So let's take uh, this step by step uh, let's let's take a nice screenshot and go to PowerPoint and let's just go one step at a time. So here I have a screenshot of the whole clock configurator module. Now let us first cover everything which we don't know. By cover I mean close it off. Okay. Now let's look at the four input clock sources which we have or oscillators so we have four input oscillators lse stands for low speed external so there is an external clock uh, source which is soldered onto your nuclear board so this line marks the the inner part of the microcontroller with uh, and separates it from the outer part and there is an hse which is an high speed external which has not been soldered on your nuclear board as you can see, it's the uh, the component designated uh, with X3. And the LSE is the black one, which uh, says X2. Also, there is a low speed internal oscillator, which can go up to 40 kilohertz max. And there's also a high speed internal, which can go to eight megahertz. And there's also a range on the high speed external, which says one to 32 megahertz. What we need to configure for the first thing or the first thing which we need to do is do the sys clock, which is your system clock at which your processor will be running. Uh, the STM32 F303 can go up to a maximum of 72 megahertz. So how to actually do that? Let's see. So we have a system clock max and we can actually select from three options. We can either choose the high speed internal one. We can choose the high speed external one or we can choose the PLL clock. Now PLL stands for uh, phase lock loop and it's the discussion and the explanation of PLL is really out of scope of this video, although you can find lots of literature and videos on how exactly a PLL behaves. But for uh, just for the sake of this video, let's uncover this tab as well. Uh, so there's also a PLL source max, which can uh, choose between then high speed uh, internal oscillator and high speed external oscillator so what this pll module basically does is can uh, divide the frequency uh, get a certain result and then multiply uh, the generated frequency so for in this example we have 8 megahertz over here and then the high speed uh, internal clock is selected and then you just divide that by one so 8 divided by 1 is equal to 8 and then you have a pll multiplier block that gives us eight times nine and we get 72 megahertz you can also select the high speed external which will only give us eight megahertz if we have soldered on an eight megahertz external oscillator so that was easy uh, now the next thing we need to do is to configure all the peripheral clocks so let us uncover that 
So here we have all the buses which we discussed in the previous video. Let me quickly jump back to your data sheet. And in the data sheet, what we did just now was to configure this F max over here, which was 72 megahertz. And then we came along the bus matrix. And then now we'll be configuring the AHP3, the AHP2, the APB1. So basically all the advanced high performance buses and the advanced peripheral buses, which are connected to all your peripheral modules. Let's go back. So there's an AHB1 prescaler over here. Let me zoom in. Uh, yeah, so we have an AHB prescaler, which is set to one. So 72 divided by one, you get 72 megahertz. And then you can uh, see all the frequencies on the right, which are the output frequencies for all uh, the APB1 peripheral clocks, the APB1 timer modules, etc., etc., etc. So whatever uh, has been connected on these uh, buses will get this clock frequency. And then you can use a prescaler to divide or a certain multiplier to get your uh, needed frequency. And then what's left is all your peripherals. So if I zoom in over here, you have your USART clock or the UART two clock, which has been already enabled. And you can also select from one of these uh, four options. For the things that are grayed out, uh, cannot be yet configured, because for that, you will have to go in the pin configuration tab and then actually enable these modules to configure their clock frequency. There is also an uh, MCO out, which stands for microcontroller output. You can actually uh, send out a clock signal uh, with a certain frequency and you can actually select which clock signal do you want to send out and then here you have uh, the i2s uh, source mux as well so this will give you your give a clock signal for your i2s module and last but not the least is your i2c clocks again just a peripheral and that's not enabled so you cannot uh, basically configure them at the moment and there is also an RTC clock. Again, this needs to be enabled. Then you can use the low speed internal, uh, the low speed internal, the low speed external, and also the HSC RTC. Let's go back to STM32 QYDE. And here, as you can see, you can play around uh, with these values. So what happens if I multiplied by 10? and it says 80 megahertz over here, but that's not supported uh, by the processor architecture. So therefore it will give me a red block uh, stating that it's an error. So I will have to roll back to nine. And that is more or less how you configure your clock. So I'm gonna double click on this and click on this gear icon with a shaft inside it, which says device configuration tool code generation. And then this will configure and generate a code for whatever values you have selected over here. Now, where does that code actually appear? Let's have a look. So we can go to core, then the source, and then the main.c. And in the main, there is this system clock config function and all the values which we just configured graphically, you can also write those same values in the form of code. So if you change any values over here, the equivalent code which is generated will change. All right, so that's about it for this video. Now, in the next one, we will be going through all the code that was generated by the code generator and the device configuration tool. Uh, the code it generated to initialize all the GPIOs, the code it generated uh, for configuring all the oscillators and the clock, which we just did right now. Once we know uh, whatever C code it has generated and once we understand uh, the C code, we can actually go ahead and blink, which we all have been waiting for since the first four videos. So that's about it for this video. See you in the next one.